son of Poseidon. I used to date your daddy. Taking a popular book and making a film adaption isn't a new concept. It has been done for many decades and has brought about thousands of film adaptions, some more true than others. When a film is adapted from a book into a film or a film series, it goes through many stages in order to adapt it to the big screen, one of which is globalisation. Globalisation is making it somewhat generic and to appear to a global audience in order to aid its appeal and its film growth. For example, most films are set in America as most cultures are familiar enough with the American culture that it has a global appeal. Elements of books are removed and changed when moving to the big screen in order to aid this and widen its appeal. We're going to look at one book to film adaption to showcase this point, Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson and the Olympian series was a film series developed by Fox and directed by Critical Ops. And he's alive. <laughs> one of the most glaring differences from the books to the film adaption is the age of the characters in the Percy Jackson series. In the books, Percy and his two friends, Grover and Annabeth, all start off at age 12. And the prophecy, which drives the series, speaks about Percy when he is 16. In the film, it is unknown what age the characters are, although Percy is in high school and portrayed by Logan Lerman, who at the time of filming was 18. Now the question is asked, why did they change this element of the book? Film series involving young protagonists have been successful before, such as Harry Potter. Mr. Potter. Our new celebrity. They changed this element of the book to aid globalisation and audience appeal. This film came out in 2010 and was amongst a hype of young adult sci-fi fiction novels such as Twilight becoming popular with a teen audience. It had a wider appeal to teenage audiences worldwide by using older cast members and also helped to create a significant difference between it and other series such as Harry Potter. Percy Jackson was already under fire from using director Chris Columbus, who directed the first two Harry Potter films. This change aided globalisation, however angered fans of the book with the change. Chris Columbus also said how he f knows what it's like working with children and how it's easier working with adults and working around children's schedules was difficult. Fox got around it by using this. Stand up and fight. Hero. Now, whilst we're on the subjects of characters, let's look at the character of Grover in the books versus the films. In the books, Grover is described as being Caucasian. He is portrayed as a timid satyr who comes in to his own throughout the series. He loves nature and is a gentle character. He's also Percy's best friend. In the movies, the characterization of Grover is entirely different. Grover, played by Brandon T. Jackson, is portrayed as being the typical comic relief psychic, cracking one-liners throughout the film. And look who's joining the party. Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Like, you give us a boat ride, you take the money, and you get an interior decorator because it is too depressing in here, all right? He is also portrayed as being quite the ladies' man, contrary to the books, where he didn't get a girlfriend until much later on in the series. Ooh, the daughters of Aphrodite. Okay, all right, guys, you guys got a lot of catching up to do. Their mother's the goddess of love, so you know where that leads. Hey, bye bye! Woo! <laughs> Say it is. In the film, Grover is shown in the casino with various women and he also seduces Hades' wife. This change was made to aid globalisation as when an audience goes into the cinema, they expect the sidekick to the main character to relieve the situations with comedy and be an interesting contrast to the lead. Given that in the books both Percy and Grover were timid and shy at the beginning of the series and had time to develop, this would not have worked very well in a film adaption. Looking at Grover's race change from books to films also shows an attempt at globalisation and widening audience appeal. In the books, Grover is explicitly stated as being Caucasian, yet the inclusion of Jackson as the satyr in the films made the films more representative and thus widened its appeal. Films are often slated when there is little to no representation of other cultures or people of colour leads. Percy Jackson addressed this with its film and changed this element of the book to be more representative and to further the globalisation of the film. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're Hades? Yes. Oh, sorry, I just didn't... I didn't expect you to look like this, man. <laughs> kind of stylish, I like it. <laughs> Would you prefer that I looked like... this? Moving on from characters, however, let's look at how they change one of the core elements of the book. 
Greek mythology. The Percy Jackson series revolves around demigods, children of the Greek gods and goddesses, and all their mighty powers. So the books focus heavily on Greek mythology. In Greek mythology, the underworld is described to be a bland place, where the dead go and wander for all eternity. In the films, this is very different. The underworld is decepted visually as being Christianity's versions of hell, with lots of fire and screaming tortured souls and scary looking things. As I mentioned earlier, globalization is making the film have a global appeal, which often means making elements westernized and basing it in America. Due to Christianity being a large and dominant religion in Western culture, one can see why this element of the book was changed to widen appeal, increase understanding, and of course, globalize the movie. The settings of the book changed dramatically for the film adaption. In one scene, Percy and his friends head to Nashville to the Greek Parthenons. In the book, Percy and his friends are never seen in Nashville, and they road trip across the states using their own vehicles, not greyhounds like seen in the movie. The characters are also never seen with technology such as the iPod. Heads up. However, this was changed in order to globalize the film and make it more appealing. It made the film feel more westernized and modern with the inclusion of logos and familiar brands such as Greyhound and Apple. Nashville and the Parthenons was included in the film as the film was based in America and if you're making a film about Greek heroes in America it only makes sense to include one of the most well-known Greek monuments in America, right? As you can see there are many small and also big changes when a book is made into a film adaption which causes it to be globalized. One can argue some of these changes are made for the best whilst others also for the worst. But at the end of the day, that all change is made to try and make the film appeal to the widest audience possible. That includes readers of the books and those new to the books. Maybe they were wrong. Maybe you're no son of Poseidon. In this essay, we've only spoke about the Percy Jackson series, and I've not even covered half of the things that have changed from the books to film adaptions, but essays can only be so long, and attention can only be kept for so long as well, so we're going to end it here. But have a look at the next time you see a film that's adapted from a book, and think about what the changes were made, and how that probably widened the appeal and globalised the film. Yeah. I think I am the son of Poseidon. Ugh! <sighs>